Oh, God damn. I've done it again. The coffee is far too hot. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another Rugby Player Reacts to the 2020 NFL Draft video. It's a new day, and that's how I like to do it. You know, there comes a point in time when you're embarking on a reaction series that you do start to get a little bit of reactors fatigue. You know, it's a phenomenon, but it's true. Yesterday, we completed the first round. Uh, we did three videos, pick numbers 1 to 10, pick numbers 11 to 20, and pick numbers 21 to 32. The first thing we're going to do is receive a little bit of analysis on what we saw, and there's four videos I've chosen to give us that. Following that, we're going to move into round number 2, round number 3, and round number 4. And hopefully we get through all of that today. So, with all that being said, the first video is titled, The Best and Most Interesting Picks from Round Number 1 of the 2020 draft. I don't know who these four guys are. One of them looks like Eric Dickerson. But I'm gonna hold my judgment, play the uh, MKP advertising clip, and I'll see you in about 22 seconds flat. Swear I like your style, put you in Chanel cause it's just perfect for your smile. Girl, I swear for you, I run the world, I run the mile. The way you look at me, I think I'm going insane. Okay, here we go. So, first video of the day. The best and most interesting picks from round number one of the 2020 draft. Now, if I'm trying to rack my brain as to what I saw, we saw one running back, and it wasn't Jonathan Taylor. We saw a fair few wide receivers. We saw a few running... Well, uh, we saw a few defensive backs. We saw the two huge linemen that I remember from the combine. We didn't see any kickers, of course. We saw one centre and we saw three or four quarterbacks. Now before I give my analysis on what I saw, let's listen to the experts. The picks 20 through 25 there. Let's see, let's get your favorite picks though of the night, Bucky Brooks. Who gets that bill for you? You know, I'm gonna go with Justin Jefferson going to the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings basically trade away one of the best route runners in football and Stefan Diggs, and they bring in somebody who is almost like a Stefan Diggs clone. Uh, I love, Justin Jefferson's polished. I love his so a lot of Justin Jefferson inside and outside, meaning playing in the slot, but also in the Joe Burrow highlight video. Also being able to kick outside, and I love that he's just a tough competitor who looks like a plug and play playmaker. I like it's a per I think it's a perfect fit uh, for what they want to do in Minnesota. Well, thanks, Bucky. Yeah, I'm gonna go Caleb on Chase Lance, on, from uh, number pick, yeah pick number twenty, Caleb on Chase on from from LSU. And I love this for the Jaguars because I think we know Ngakwe is going to be out the door. How they handle that, I'll let them figure it out. I, I wouldn't want to do it personally right now. But uh, Chason has the ability to really be that... That's just jogged my memory. There's another issue that is at the forefront of the Jaguars franchise. And that is Leonard Fournette and whether he's going to be traded away. Now, I've just heard in the last 48 hours that the Jaguars have declined to trade away Leonard Fournette. And they will be fulfilling his fifth year option. What does that mean for the year after? I have to look at that. Look in Rusher to Josh Allen, and I think he also has great football character, and I think there's some leadership and, and maybe a, a change in culture the that Jaguars is needed need over some there. Help, that's for you sure. got a guy who just won a national championship, played his best football at the end of the uh, year as well, and I think he's an ascending pass rusher. I think we're going to see his best football really over the next two or three years. He's going to take a big jump forward. I saw it in season this year, so I love that pick. You know, Rhett's a very positive person. I, I am not. Uh, I'm a very negative person, and I like to bring out the worst in everybody. So uh, why don't we shift to the least favorite pick of the, uh, the first round, Bucky? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Isaiah Wilson and the Tennessee Titans. Not necessarily because I don't think it's a great fit. I think it's a really good fit in terms of him being a mauler brawler at the point of attack. I just don't know if when you look at him on his own, if he's a first-round talent. Look, he's big, he's physical, does a great job of throwing people around, but he has a ways to go when it comes to like playing the game. But for a Tennessee Titans team that likes to just kind of bully people at the point of attack, he certainly fits their style. Who is Isaiah Wilson? I can't remember. Offensive tackle. Suppose you're going to ask the same of me, Money? Yes, no, of course yeah. I am. I just assumed you would take the baton, but Bucky was a track guy. You weren't <laughs> quarantined. So, uh, God, so this guy's quick. Favorite pick. <laughs> no, uh, maybe it's because I'm trying to, uh, to to avoid the name, but I'm pretty sure I've got it here. Noah Igbenogany. Come on. Noah Igbenogany. I did it. 
Uh, he's, he might not like what I say here, but listen, I... I, I called him Ibanogany. I thought the, the, I thought the first G was silent. I think I was pretty close. I thought Xavier Howard, when he was drafted by Miami, I thought big, strong, physical, explosive. But now, this guy is a left tackle. I'm unsure why this fella is their least favorite pick. But when I first saw him be drafted as a left tackle, and then I saw Tua's left hand, I thought, you're not actually going to be blocking for this guy. You're going to have to go over to the right. I'm wondering if this is what Lance is going to talk about. He mauls people. He makes a lot of interference penalty. There's a lot of interferences down the field. And oh, no. He's just, he's just sloppy. I see the same thing with, uh, you know, with Noah Igbenogany, and I think maybe Miami does too. Only Miami said, we can take all those traits and coach it up, and look what happened. They've got a fantastic cornerback, and I'm sure that's what they're saying here. He's got speed. He's got physicality, but he is really raw right now. Struggles finding a football, and, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of penalties, grabbiness down the field. He's got some work to do, but this, this wasn't a draft pick for this. Is this a tackle, or is this the cornerback? Ig Benogany, cornerback. God, I talk some shit sometimes, don't I? Sure, I think. I swear they drafted a tackle. I swear, no, they got they got three picks. I'm pretty sure they got the the quarterback, they got their cornerback, and they got a tackle. But it was a left tackle. This is a process pick, and they did well with Xavier Howard. We'll see if they could do it with this one. I'm going to jump in real quick, overall, Brad, real quick. Ahead, I, I, want to, I want to share my least favorite pick. Yep. Yeah. Because oh. I now got to sit and watch. Yeah, if I could just stop you there, mate. Yeah, we've got no time for you. Good night. Biggest surprise for me. Okay. That was video number one. Short and sweet. Um, I'm about... Blah, 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 blah. I actually can't really talk this morning. <sighs> I feel like I need to inject this into my veins. But we won't do that today. Anyways, guys, the next video is on the clock. What was the biggest surprise from round number one of the 2020 draft? Now, we're actually going to hear from ex-players. So, guys, when we return, we will hear from the man, Steve Smith, talk about what his biggest surprise from round number one of the 2020 draft was. And I can't wait, man. This, this draft was stacked. Right, at least I think this draft was stacked. If there's been a more stacked draft, let me know. But, man, I just want to see where Jonathan Taylor gets drafted. Anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.